story begins about 90 miles down the highway at the University of Kentucky. Shayna was among the graduates of the class of 2012, a hometown Lexington girl. I've known her since second grade. Morgan Burroughs grew up near Shayna. They went to the same high school. She was very smart, like really, really smart. A lot of people at school knew who she was. Like everybody was like, oh, well, that's the girl that's got good grades and stuff and really, really pretty. Like everybody would always talk about how pretty she was. Morgan says people considered her driven to succeed, a standout student in high school, Dean's List in college, now Who pursuing her master's. Date. But as time went on, it wasn't clear if Ryan and Shayna actually were dating. I don't know if he would tell you they were in a relationship. Ryan's friends say he lost interest rather quickly and tried to end things with Shayna, but she refused. How can he allow her to decide whether they're going to break up or not? He just wasn't able to. Uh, he was too nice, didn't want to hurt her feelings. He did feel duty-bound to let her down easy. So easy, the relationship continued on and off for more than a year, with Ryan and Shayna chronicling it all to friends on social media. Ryan being asked in one exchange, Are you still dating what's-her-name? Shayna? Yeah. How's that going? It's okay. I'm pretty expletive-stressed. I received 75 text messages from her. I am emotionally and mentally spent. I hope she leaves me alone. And Shayna confiding to a friend. He says he's only with me because I make him feel so awful when I cry. My love has turned to hate. Hey, human family, how are you? It's Darren. Welcome to another episode of Fully Alive Again. You guys, today I have a really good program for us. We are going to examine three of the major reasons we find ourselves trapped and in an abusive, destructive relationship with a narcissist. If we can prevent these things from happening, we can easily maneuver in a world full of narcissists because we know how to transcend their tactics, efforts, and their evil. Does that sound good? All right then, let's do what we do and dive deep. In order to live and to live fully and to enjoy our lives, we have to get back out into the world and set goals and get a vision for the life that we want. We have been so damaged often by a narcissist and an abusive person that it's very difficult to trust ourselves to operate correctly out in the world. I want to use this tragic story to provide a few, a few tools that will help us maneuver and trust ourselves out, into, out when we're out in the world. Because if we keep these tools at the front burner of our mind, we will never allow a narcissist person enter our lives again. And if they do, which there's a probability that that can occur, maybe even a high probability that that can occur. But when it does, you're perfectly ready, able, and willing to get this person out of your life immediately, to not let them sink their hooks into you. So let's take a look at a tragic story of a young man who didn't realize the caliber of person he was dealing with. The victim, 29-year-old Ryan Poston. He'd just opened his own law firm. His life is taking off. A large and distinguished family, so many friends, so many beautiful women orbiting around him, and no known enemy. Police in Highland Heights are still trying to piece together exactly what led to the fatal shooting. At now he's dead, shot six times with his own gun. What happened? This was a shocking crime, six shots. And down he went to the floor. Bad blood between a beautiful woman and a man. A twisted romance turned sour. 
Inside a suburban condo, the dining room becomes a crime scene. A hail of gunfire from a semi-automatic. All right, you guys, there's a few things to unpack here. And this is one of the takeaways. That is, there's a lot of chatter online about alpha males, high value males, and what kind of men are abused or hurt by a woman. You can see here that this young man at 29 started his own law firm. He was on the come up. He was dating some of the most beautiful women in his area. And you'll see that further down the line in this video. He was the, the epitome of an alpha male. You see, often as an alpha male, we overlook that a woman's just this sweet little angel, this little, this little plaything. There's no way they could get the jump on me. Are you kidding me? You see, we can be disillusioned into believing that we're invincible, that we are a man and she is a woman, that no way in God's name could she get the angle on me to physically harm me or mentally harm me. And for all of you listening that have never been abused by a narcissist, this is a major mistake. You have to take a woman as serious as you would a foe of a man. Just as you would an oppositional man, a man who's trying to physically harm you or, or destroy your business or attack you in any way. It is no less serious. And, you, and we've been indoctrinated for the polar opposite of that. Most narcissists will destroy you slowly. And I'm speaking to both male and female here. Everything that I'm saying in this episode about the, the female narcissist can be transferred over to some degree for a male narcissist. The tactics that I'm teaching here and that I'm speaking about cross over. They are, they are non-binary. <laughs> Can't believe I just said that, but they are. You Both genders can utilize this information. I utilize women in my discussions because it's been my experience to have more female narcissists cause harm in my family and throughout my life than male narcissists. And I was emotionally, financially destroyed by a female narcissist. So it's paramount to me that I warn men that these women are more clever, more stealth than you think. We're going to begin with the murder trial of that honor student from Kentucky. Tonight, the case that had the country glued. She said, yeah, he wanted a nose job, so I gave him one. I gave him a nose job. He wanted... That made my blood run cold. A promising life cut down. How did it go from mad love to bad blood? Good evening. Here tonight, that stunning tape from the interrogation room, a suspect who can't stop talking, can't stop acting out. But you're about to see it get even more bizarre. So how did things go from photos like these of a happy couple on Instagram to the so-called nose job murder? A headline that began when six shots were pumped into that handsome young bachelor, a man obsessed with guns himself. He was often out with friends as part of the Friday night dating scene, just like so many people are out doing tonight. Beautiful women always wanting to know him, but one of those women would become a fatal attraction. Here's Gio Benitez. The story begins here at a bar called the Milford Inn. 24 year old Audrey Bolte is waiting. Any minute now, a man is supposed to arrive. Were you excited to meet him? Yes, of course. I was very much looking forward to it. I mean, Audrey isn't just your average beautiful blonde on a blind date. Audrey Bolte, you are Miss Ohio. She's Miss Ohio 2012. See, three women remain only one, one of the remain, final three at the, the Miss USA department. pageant. The second runner up is Ohio, Audrey Bolte. But tonight, Miss Ohio is hoping to meet Mr. Wright. Um, I had ended a serious relationship about a month prior, so it was kind of like me getting back out to, in this, to the social world. They had met on Facebook through mutual friends. 
They talked about possibly meeting at Ryan's condo, but decide to rendezvous at the bar. One small change in the plans changes the course of the entire night. Who wouldn't be looking forward to meet a lawyer from Cincinnati who's attractive, funny, and witty? I mean, who wouldn't be excited to? It was going to be a night of fun and shooting pool. It's mid-October, Friday night, not far from the bright lights of Cincinnati, across the Ohio River. In the small... And I'm speaking to the man here who have been in an abusive relationship with a woman. There's a lot of chatter, as I said earlier, online, saying that you're some kind of trick, a simp, this, that, and the other. Don't listen to that rhetoric. These are punk-ass men who don't know what they're talking about, in my opinion. These women, and I've seen this, you guys. <laughs> I've seen this with my own eyes. Men saying this kind of things about other men who are married or in a relationship with a narcissist and they don't even know it. I've seen it with my own eyes. Over and over again I've seen this. And I just sit back and say, you're with a time bomb right now talking shit about other men and you don't even see it. But my point is stand tall. Don't allow all of this alpha talk and all of this simp shit online convince you that you're some kind of broken half man. These women can fool the best of the best. They've been doing it since the dawn of time. It's written in the Bible and it's nothing new. Doesn't minimize what happened to you. I just want you to stand up become fully alive again and get back out there and live. Suburb of Highland Heights, Kentucky, a typical small town full of fast food on the highways, but life is rather slow. The big news is the high school football team. The Bluebirds are undefeated. It's a crisp and clear evening, an autumn chill in the air. And back at the bar, Audrey appears to be getting the cold shoulder. And I'm kind of like looking around and I didn't see him. Um, so I waited. She goes to touch up her mascara. It's almost 1030 and it's looking as if Miss Ohio is in the unlikely position of being stood up. And you must have been waiting and waiting and waiting. I mean, what's going through your mind? Were you angry? Were... I mean, I'm a girl. And so I was like, where is this guy? Like, where is he? His name is Ryan Poston. And Audrey was hardly the first woman to find him appealing. So you two were just really in love. I thought he was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen in my life. It was love at first sight. And I guess it was three days later and I had a key to his apartment. For about two years, Lauren Worley was with Ryan. They even got these dogs, Max and Lily, together. When they met, Lauren was a student at Chase Law School at nearby Northern Kentucky University. And Ryan, who had already graduated from there, was studying for the bar exam. So there was that electricity between you two, right? It really was. And I kept remember thinking, I cannot believe that he wants to date me. Like, he is just so perfect and so beautiful. As and, if you're not gorgeous. Well, I appreciate that. But, <laughs> I mean, Ryan Poston is one of a kind. I thought that he was perfect for her. Lauren's former roommate, Emmy Reynolds, thought it was a match made in heaven. And I know you, you even compared Ryan to a, a character of Twilight, right? I did, I did. Who? You know, the character Edward. He is just such a protector. So soft-spoken. Are you afraid? Always there. Even his build was similar to Ryan's. I felt so loved. To Lauren, 29-year-old Ryan was the whole package. He had the brains to match his good looks, plus a loving and highly successful family. Sort of like the movers and shakers. People that have been around for a very long time doing very big things. You know, our families have been friends for 20, 20 years. Got to know Tom Awadawa and Matt Heron were two longtime buddies who agree that Ryan's spell wasn't just cast on women. Uh, it was a magnetic person to be around. He would go and hang out in bars just like this. Yeah, we go out a lot every weekend probably. They say nights with Ryan in bars like this wouldn't result in your usual drunk talk, but rather non-stop debate sessions. He could literally talk about anything and everything. He was passionate about so many things. Philosophy, politics. They say Ryan had strong feelings on many subjects. You see, one of the most disturbing 
And one of the things that let me down the most about clinical psychologists in the entire field of psychology is that they're not ringing the bell, that there's a fire going on in our society. Neither are the religious leaders. No one in any institution, nor will they ever, teach what narcissism does and what these type of people are and what to look for where every citizen knows about it. For instance, we all know that smoking's bad. We all know to say no to drugs. There are a plethora of things that we warn society about. This is not one of them. Why is this? Because narcissists are clever. They know that they need to take over the world of psychology, that they need to take over the world of academia, that they need to take over world of politics and psychology, etc. It is my firm opinion that kids aren't being taught about these kinds of people and most people are completely blind to these types of people, it is not by accident. It is by design of evil energy. And I'm just going to give you an example of this. And by no means am I saying that drag queens are evil. But if you look at the current teachings going on in schools all across the country, is it more important to learn about a drag queen or narcissism? Is it more important to learn about transgender people or narcissism? Are there more narcissists or transgender people in the world? You see, we have to look at things with a third eye. Narcissists are brilliant at creating smoke screens, at creating chaos, to put the focus on something else other than them. We broke up always thinking, I think in the back of my mind, at least that we were gonna get back together. But meanwhile, another one of Ryan Poston's relationships was disintegrating. He was stressed out, absolutely stressed out. Crystal Ojozo was a friend that Ryan had hired at his law firm in this building in downtown Cincinnati. But he was having a bitter falling out with his partner there. It was sucking the life out of him, literally. In the midst of the fight, he sends Crystal an angry Facebook message ranting about the lawsuit between him and his partner, saying, I want this piece of expletive destroyed. Bury him neck deep at low tide. Throw darts at his head. Wait for high tide to roll in so I can stomp on his head while he's drowning. An uncharacteristic display of anger, his friends say, and now something else is incongruous. The usually reliable Ryan has left Miss Ohio, Audrey Bolte, sitting alone, waiting for him at the Milford Inn. There's only a few emotions that narcissists can tolerate from their so-called friends and the people that they're in a relationship with. One is confusion. The other is sadness. And the other is anger. They want you to be angry and or afraid. If you know someone and you see their anger increasing and you're like, wow, they're really changing. That should have never came out of their mouth. What's going on? This person may be in a relationship with a narcissist. And heed my warnings. If you find yourself being triggered by life more often and, a, and, and starting to have less fun and more anger in your life, take a look at what's going on. Take a look at the people that are around you and the people that you're in a relationship with. You cannot be in a relationship with a narcissist without it impacting your life without it diminishing your potential, your happiness, your inner peace, and your sanity.
it's virtually impossible. You must have been thinking, uh, this can't be happening to me right now. Yeah, he was very you know, responsive to text messages. I had just talked to him. He said, okay, no problem, see you there. How many text messages do you think you sent him that night? I would say I sent probably two or three to him saying, hey, I'm here, where are you, are you coming? And he didn't show up, so I went home. The reason Ryan never showed up, because he's lying in a pool of his own blood in his Highland Heights condo where Audrey almost met him. Ryan has been shot and help won't make it in time. Are you sure that he is dead? This 911 call just received and it's a woman's voice. Ma'am, I have a um, school. Of course, this is a rare case of a woman killing her boyfriend, but it is not as rare as you think. And if you think women are less violent than men, you are incorrect. They do it differently. But there are just as many violent, aggressive women who want to harm you and do it passive aggressively or through others or do it slowly with a little poison every day meaning gaslighting manipulating lying little things to drive you insane or anger you or stress you so they get their narcissistic supply is ample and just as ample if not more so than men so don't get it twisted don't believe the narratives going around online or the narratives in society that women are always the victim and the man can never be harmed by a woman. This can end you up in a very bad spot. Don't believe the hype. No one has yet proven to me in all of my research and all of my experiences that the end goal of the narcissist is to end you, to either erase your identity and leave you a bumbling shell of what you once were or to convince you or cause you to commit suicide and or take you out like this young woman did to her boyfriend. This is nothing to play with. And your narcissist, believe it or not, the person you were laying next to, have these types of visions, have this capability. If you lack empathy and the ability to feel and to love, you can do anything to anybody. I will say this on just about every show. There are narcissists that are more refined more put together where they kill slowly. They have more self-preservation. They are more civil. But they want to end you and to make your life a living hell and savor that for as long as possible or watch you, or watch you end yourself or do it themselves. I use videos like this to take away the fluff, to show you the chaos, the pain and destruction these people cause. And heads back to the station where the woman is waiting in this interview room. It's the first time he learns her name, Shayna Hubers. My name's Dave Pointers from a sergeant, okay? At the moment, he knows nothing about her or how she and Ryan were connected at all. That story begins about 90 miles down the highway at the University of Kentucky. Shayna was among the graduates of the class of 2012, a hometown Lexington girl. I've known her since second grade. Morgan Burroughs grew up near Shayna. They went to the same high school. She was very smart, like really, really smart. A lot of people at school knew who she was. Like everybody was like, oh, well, that's the girl that's got good grades and stuff and really, really pretty. Like everybody would always talk about how pretty she was. Morgan says people considered her driven to succeed, a standout student in high school, Dean's List in college, now pursuing her master's in school counseling. 
So you park the car and you're just walking now. Right. Here it is right here, building right. number 12. Building number 12. He enters building 12 and heads up the stairs. And we're listening for stuff as we go up the steps. Another officer now with him as he approaches number 10, the condo belonging to that young lawyer, 29-year-old Ryan Poston. The shooter is still on the phone. Ma'am, I want you to go to your front door. I want you to open it up, walk outside the door with your hands in front of you. Okay, I will. So that door opens up. A young woman emerges, early 20s, slim, about 5'8", long brown hair. And this is takeaway number two. Don't allow someone's accomplishments and achievements prevent you from seeing who they are and convince you not to pay attention or adhere to the other warning flags. Just because a person has several degrees or a successful business and have accomplished a lot of things doesn't make them a good person. Successful rich people don't always have an enriching effect on your life. Poor people don't always have a poor effect on your life. You judge a person by their energy, by who they are. Don't allow their achievements to deter you from listening to and adhering to the red flags that they're presenting to you. Another thing is, is that a person that's an overachiever, a person that is constantly busy, may be that type of person to shut down the inner noise that's inside their head, to shut down the evilness that's in them. The narcissists that I've been around in my life could never sit still. They had to be doing something because they don't want to be around the evil energy that's inside them. They want to be the person that they're pretending. That's why I tell you, it's better to be you than the narcissist, no matter what they've done. They want to be like you when it's all said and done. So don't get fooled by a busy narcissist that has a truckload of accomplishments. These people are running from themselves and hiding underneath their, their wealth, their degrees, their titles. Do not let that deter you from listening to the intuition that you have from the red flags that they presented. Because of the sick world that we all operate in and must He's learn to maneuver in. Ryan's cousin had known Shana uh, from, from college and, and she had arranged the introduction. Ryan's lifelong friend, Brian Stewart, had moved to New York, but remembers Ryan telling him about meeting Shana. Ryan was uh, certainly attracted to her and I'm sure that it, the feeling was mutual. Clearly, she loved posting pictures of herself on Instagram, but now she was only too eager to include Ryan. They were both smart and good-looking, but there was one big difference, their backgrounds. Shayna grew up here, a solid middle-class neighborhood with some unmanicured lawns. I think she would probably want something that looked better than the neighborhood she was in. Something perhaps like this, the bluegrass horse farms and blue blood heritage Lexington is famous for, a world of money and prestige, a world familiar to Ryan, but money can't buy you love. He was in the rebound state still. It was a few months after Ryan and longtime girlfriend Lauren Worley had broken up. She didn't know Shayna, but her old roommate, Emmy Reynolds, did. Do you think that she was just a gold digger, thinking, you know what, Ryan's my ticket to a good life? Actually, yes. I'm going to get me a doctor or lawyer. That's who she wanted to date. But as time went on, it wasn't clear if Ryan and Shayna actually were dating. I don't know if he would tell you they were in a relationship. Ryan's friends say he lost interest rather quickly and tried to end things with Shayna, but she refused. How can he allow her to decide whether they're going to break up or not? He just wasn't able to. Uh, he was too nice, didn't want to hurt her feelings. He did feel duty-bound to let her down easy. So easy, the relationship continued on and off for more than a year, with Ryan and Shayna chronicling it all to friends on social media, Ryan being asked in one exchange, are you still dating what's-her-name?
Now, I can't drive this home enough, and I will say it on just about every show that I do, trying to appease other people, trying to be too civil, too nice, too agreeable, will cause you nothing but trouble. Stop worrying about hurting other people's feelings. Right now, there's a narrative being driven from many corners of the world in society trying to convince us that we are responsible for other people's feelings, that your feelings should never be hurt, and if they are, it's the other person's fault, regardless of your perception. This is one of the reasons I got out of diversity training where I had a very lucrative career and could have taken it even further. I could not pretend and adhere to the kind of narratives and bullshit that it is preaching throughout society. I don't want to digress. My point here is, is that not wanting to hurt someone's feelings is absolutely a recipe for disaster. I spent a relationship that I knew I should have gotten out of. I even told some of my best men, some of my friends during my wedding, I'm only getting married so her parents aren't let down by her and that she doesn't have to deal with all of the problems. She's really in a bad spot. I felt obligated. I kid you not. That's how stupid I was. I wear that. But I stayed in a relationship. And I know this sounds crazy to many. I stayed in a relationship because I didn't want to hurt someone. I, When she would cry and scream, jump on my car hood and wouldn't let go. All of the crazy things this woman did when I was trying to leave her, I felt guilty. I felt bad. I felt like... I had to be an honorable man and protect her. Gentlemen, brah, everyone listening, do not get caught in this shit. It will destroy you. You, me, we, ladies too, if you're holding on to a man because he's crying how he can't make it without you and he's saying all these bad things are going to happen, that is not your responsibility. We are adults. We are responsible for ourselves. You are not responsible for the way that another person perceives themselves, an adult perceives themselves or perceives how they operate themselves in the world. That is a bunch of what the young kids call cap. It's bullshit. It's a lie. It's a lie in society. It's a lie in your head. Stop worrying about not being nice. Listen to your intuition. Speak the truth about the way that you feel about something. And tell these people, bye. Shut the door in the relationship Block them from everything that you can. Get a new lock. If you have to move, move and get them the F out of your life. This is nothing to play with. If I could go the years that I wasted with this vulgar human being is one of the biggest regrets. It, 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 it's the greatest regret that I have in my life. And the toll was substantial. Don't play. Stop being nice. We live in a whole world that's being conditioned right now that you must be agreeable and you must be nice to everybody. And if somebody's upset, it's your fault. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. You are not responsible for the way that other people feel. You be polite. You be polite in your breakup. You be polite in your discussions and communications. But you do not owe that person anything. The self-entitlement and that you're responsible for the way that I feel. And you must make the world f fit my expectations and the way that I view myself. Go eat a bowl of dicks. That shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that kind of way of life is 100% narcissism. 
It's from the book, from the playbook 101 of narcissism, and it will take everything down. Darren, you're digressing. <laughs> so my point here is, and the takeaway again, of course, is stop being nice and worrying about their feelings. They don't give a shit about you. I don't know if he would tell you they were in a relationship. Ryan's friends say he lost interest rather quickly and tried to end things with Shayna, but she refused. How can he allow her to decide whether they're going to break up or not? He just wasn't able to. Uh, he was too nice, didn't want to hurt her feelings. He did feel duty bound to let her down easy. So easy, the relationship continued on and off for more than a year, with Ryan and Shayna chronicling it all to friends on social media. Ryan being asked in one exchange, Are you still dating what's her name? Shayna? Yeah. How's that going? It's okay. I'm pretty expletive stressed. I received 75 text messages from her. I am emotionally and mentally spent. I hope she leaves me alone. And Shayna confiding to a friend. He says he's only with me because I make him feel so awful when I cry. My love has turned to hate. But they're still together in October 2012. It's the night of the vice presidential debate between Joe Biden and Paul Ryan. We love to watch those debates. Absolutely love to watch that kind of stuff. Ryan was going to watch with his whole well-to-do family here in their stately brick home. What do you know about that night? They were happy just to have Ryan come to dinner, even if Shayna was there as well. If Shayna had any thoughts that getting this invitation for steak and asparagus meant a turn for the better, she was about to learn Ryan was ready to stick a fork in the relationship once and for all. Ryan had, had approached his stepfather and, and indicated that the relationship wasn't going forward. And he's got a new girl already lined up. Remember Miss Ohio, Audrey Bolte? That blind date is the very next night. I have no doubt that, uh, that this is what set her off and she knew that she was losing him and, and that would be final. 24 hours later, Ryan is dead. A Highland Heights woman allegedly... Just like a business, you guys, when you're going to break up with someone who is giving you an indication that they're psychotic, that they're a narcissist, you have to have an exit strategy knowing how you're going to do it. My suggestion is, is that you do it in public in this kind of scenario. That you don't take her back to your house. You don't take him back to your apartment. You do it at a public place. You do it where you've met with separate cars and you go your own way. And then you take all of the necessary precautions to protect yourself once you've given them the bye-bye. You don't, you have to think things through. You have to think like you're dealing with a crazy, evil person because that's what they are. You're not feeling those signals to want to get rid of them for no reason at all. So you certainly don't tell them goodbye while you're isolated all alone in your apartment with guns. This poor chap had no idea who and what he was dealing with. Shot and killed her boyfriend. Shana Hubers allegedly fired those fatal shots. This is somebody who wanted him dead. It was like I was out, it was out of body experience. And Shana is in the interrogation room, utterly ignoring her right to remain silent. I gave him his nose job. He wanted. When I first saw the interrogation tapes of Shana Hubers, I immediately thought, of Jody Arias. Jody Arias, the Arizona woman who shot her boyfriend, then stood on her head during a police interrogation. <laughs> if you thought that tape was off the charts, wait till you see this. How a pretty 21-year-old graduate student who admitted to pulling the trigger is sitting in the interrogation hot seat. <laughs> Sergeant Dave Fornash reads Shayna Huber's her Miranda rights. Says you have the right to remain silent. So she said, I want an attorney. I, I can't ask her any questions once she invokes the right to have an attorney. Though to complete his report, he asked for the victim's name. What was his name? The man that I killed her. Ryan Hyde. 
murder person. The man that I killed, she says. I was kind of stunned. And at that point, you know, she just started talking. She talked and talked and talked. I killed him, she says, but with an explanation. It was self-defense. I honestly, like, shot the man in self-defense. Okay. He was throwing me around the room. As soon as it happened, it was surreal. It was like I was out, it was out of body experience. It was like, that was not me. That was not me. Okay. Sergeant Fornash leaves the room to process what he just heard. Meanwhile, Shayna becomes increasingly anxious. Look at her here, fidgeting, pacing, and drinking copious amounts of water. Eventually, another officer comes to keep her company. Once again, without being asked, Shayna starts spouting. Telling police what she says happened inside that apartment. A domestic dispute gone awry. Picking me up and throwing me against the bookshelf. That's when you started screaming all the nasty things. I think you're a little girl. Everyone knows you're crazy. Shayna says Ryan sat at this dining room table, glaring and screaming at her, all while playing with his Sig Sauer semi automatic handgun and ammo. He's pulled it out, whipped it, and been like, What would you, what would you do if I shot you right now? What would you do if I, I was afraid. Remember, Ryan was a gun enthusiast, his messy apartment full of paraphernalia, an artillery vest hanging next to his ties, bullets sharing a cabinet with board games. But then she goes on to paint Ryan as a pill-popping zealot, habitually abusing prescription drugs like Adderall, Xanax, and Ambien. Sure enough, there are vials of medication everywhere in the crime scene photos, right next to his bullets on the table. He's been whacked on drugs for a long time. He's capable of anything. Shayna starts to act it all out, saying Ryan got up. And he wasn't completely standing up. He was like this. But before he could strike, she says she grabbed his gun from the table and began shooting. He fell onto the ground. He was like laying like this. His glasses were still on. He was twitching some more. I shot him a couple more times just to make sure he was dead. Because I didn't want to watch him die. Now, if you watch that closely, and I suggest you go back and look at it, you're going to see the lack of empathy that I talk about that runs through these people. Now, remember, this is a honor roll student in high school in college, a popular girl, well-disciplined, congenial, a ladylike woman who fit into society quite comfortably, who just killed supposedly the man that she loves and the way that she's explaining it just exudes that this woman has no empathy. She's incapable of loving. And she had the audacity to say, I killed him. <laughs> and I apologize for laughing because this is not a laughing matter. But she is so pathetic that laughter is all that I can come up with. She has the audacity to say, that I killed him so I didn't have to watch him die, thinking that that shows empathy. I didn't want to feel the pain of watching him suffer in his last breaths. So instead of calling an ambulance or giving him CPR because I'm safe now, I shot him five more times because the horror that I would experience because I would have to suffer and watch this man die and that would just tear me apart because I'm a sweet little angel. Officer, all that I do is float around shitting butterflies, rainbows, and unicorns. That's all I do. I just trying to protect my boyfriend from suffering. Six slugs, a mercy killing, she claims, to put her bleeding boyfriend out of his misery. But then, an extraordinary remark. The very thing, one of our last conversations we had that was good was that he wants to get a nose job. Just that kind of person. And I shot him right here. I gave him his nose job. He wanted... Yeah, you heard that right. But Police Chief Bill Birkenhauer couldn't believe his ears. When you heard her say, I gave him that nose job he always wanted my jaw dropped you know it's like did she just really say that it's important to know and there it is right there you guys that is the real person
stating that she gave him his nose job. She shot him right in the face. That person has always been there and has been hiding over, through their accomplishments, through their beauty. That is the real person. It is not what you see on the surface. It is not the gifts that they give you or the compliments that they give you or the love making and the sex and the orgasms that they give you. That is what you were sleeping with. 100% pure evil. Anyone that could say something like that doesn't feel. I've been saying these kinds of things since I started my channel. You are dealing with evil. It is not a personality disorder. You can call it that and you can categorize them any way that you want. But when you break it all down, it's all evil. Was she behaving like an evil monster when she was in high school? Was she behaving like an evil monster when she was getting all of the accolades in college and she was going out with various people and doing different things? Now, she was acting a little cuckoo like girlfriend's little cycle. She's strange. She's this and that. But would you have said people were looking at her like, that's a murderer? No! Because they behave differently at different stages and different experiences in their life. They are all the same. Sheer, pure evil. It's coming from a different place. And when you play with that and you don't take it serious, you don't set the kind of boundaries that are necessary, you don't take the necessary precautions to protect yourself, getting out of relationship with one of these people, and you don't understand who and what these people really are. And it makes you more trusting of them. It makes you okay to deal with them. You know, it's just a narcissist. She's just borderline. She's just this, that, or the other. Oh, my God. But that's the insanity of the world. Shot, he let out a really loud noise that sounded like an animal. It sounded like a bear. Some type of wild animal. It's easy to look at Shayna and think that she's obviously a few fries short of a Happy Meal. However, during the trial, she was officially diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. During Shayna's retrial, Ryan's father, Jay Poston, also took the stand. Then the other cuckoo, cuckoo, come in from the academia world and officially label her as being borderline personality disordered. Now, what the F? You can't make this shit up, you guys. Look at the stuff that she did. Wouldn't let him go. All of the psychotic stuff she did. And she's officially diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. What's the difference? What's the difference from a sociopath, a psychopath, dark triad, overt narcissist, covert narcissist, borderline personality, except the academia world intellectually orgasming themselves sitting around in a circle jerk off, creating new titles, new information to appease their own egos and to come up with new bullshit theories about people and different personalities. Now, please don't misconstrue. I thank the world of psychologists who introduced me to this concept and the traits, but things go too far. And they're trying, and just think when you hear a woman that did something like this, and then the psychologist comes out and says, well, you know, she's not evil. She's borderline. Then your defenses go down. Your empathy goes up. And the cycle continues. The world keeps going around in circles. And these people keep getting away with things like this and things that we've all experienced because they're watering it down. I don't expect that to change in my lifetime, but I'm telling you as a listener to tell your kids, to tell your loved ones, both male and female, that evil exists in the world. There are monsters who wake up every day 
and think of a way of hurting someone, draining someone of energy, driving someone insane, and even taking their own lives and they don't feel anything. You can call it borderline. You can call it Fred. It is what it is. It's all the same thing. Intellectually delivered with all of this word salad of different personality types when the same person in the same traits could be seen throughout their life. Rest assured, if they were studying this woman at various times and having conversations with her, she would have fit at one point or another on every single scale of the Cluster B world. I don't have the clip. I'm not putting up the clip, but she was sleeping with 10 other guys while she was pursuing him. So this wasn't about love. She wasn't in love with him. It wasn't like she couldn't live without him. It wasn't about money, about getting a, 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 a some kind of reward from the insurance company that they always use to disguise evil and say, well, she killed him or her for money. It wasn't that. It was none of the above. She had 10 lovers while she did this and while she was pursuing this man. They do it because they are agents of of chaos they are put here to hurt and destroy and until people really look at that and accept it it's not gonna change your job is to understand it it's a beautiful world i don't want you walking away from this video afraid to live if you listen to the things that i'm saying and the things that you've learned on other channels you're gonna be just fine you can cut them off at the path they are not gods they are not 10 feet tall all that you have to do is listen to your warning signs he knew he should have got out of that relationship within two months but he didn't do it and that's the final takeaway Always, and I can't drive this home enough, listen to your intuition and trust yourself. You are prepared to go out into the world and live fully now. You've got this. You know there's monsters out here like this. I pulled away the fluff. You know how severe the consequences can be. So when you're out enjoying your life, making new friends, getting into new relationships, when those red flags appear see you later bye it's not that big a deal we're not fighting a crocodile down at the water hole but don't let this kind of information isolate you and keep you in the house afraid that's completely on the contrary of what i'm trying to convey all right you guys and never forget you guys that the vast majority of political politics across the world are filled with narcissists. The vast majority of religions are filled with narcissists. We're in a very turbulent time in life where people are trying to divide and conquer us. Be good to one another. Just because we disagree doesn't mean that we're enemies. To my gay brothers and sisters, my transgender brothers and sisters, my black brothers and sisters, white brothers and sisters, Latino, Asian, Native American, European, Eastern European, Brazilian, the entire globe of human population. Do not allow the politics and the religion of today divide us and conquer us and send us into chaos and self-destruction. Be good to one another. Listen, learn, grow, and remember it's okay to disagree. I'll catch you on the next video. Until then, peace, be well.